When we step into the world of automation with Ansible, one of the first things we discover is the inventory file. At first, it looks simple, just a list of servers. But as your setup grows, things start to get complicated. Every network is unique and every environment has different needs. You might have multiple groups, different kinds of servers, and sometimes even the same host needs to belong to more than one group. If your inventory is not organized well, it becomes messy, hard to manage, and even harder to run playbooks on the right machines. That is why understanding the inventory file is so important. It is the foundation of Ansible automation. It tells Ansible exactly which systems to manage, how they are grouped, and how everything connects. In this video, we will keep it simple. We will build an inventory file step by step, define groups, add hosts, and explore different combinations. You will also see how to run specific plays on specific groups. By the end, you will be able to create and manage inventory files confidently for any setup. I've already set up Ansible to run inside a Docker container using SSH keys for passwordless login, and we will be using that same setup here. If you have not watched the previous setup videos, you can find the links in the description. I have added all the code to my GitHub repository, so you don't need to copy anything, you can use it directly. Now let's get started and explore the Ansible inventory file. Before we start creating our inventory file, let's quickly understand why it matters. The inventory file tells Ansible where your servers are and how to connect to them. Let's open the official Ansible documentation to get a clear view of how it all works. To do this, search on Google for Ansible community documentation and click on the first link from docs.ansible.com. From the left panel, click on getting started with Ansible. Here you'll find a diagram that shows exactly how Ansible uses the inventory file to connect to and manage remote hosts. Next, to learn how to create an inventory file, scroll down and click on the link called Building an Inventory. This page has all the details along with examples. The first example shows how to define the inventory in the .ini format. If you're just getting started, .ini format is simple and easy to use. But as your setup grows, you will want to use YAML. If you scroll down, you will see that Ansible supports both .ini and YAML formats. INI is good for small setups, but YAML gives much more flexibility. Here we have an example of a group of hosts in a YAML inventory file, which is similar to our setup. To create a group, we start with a group name. It's worth noting a few tips for naming groups and hosts. Avoid spaces, hyphens, or starting names with numbers. Underscores are allowed, and names are case sensitive. Following these rules helps prevent errors later. With a group name set, we continue by adding the keyword hosts. Under hosts, we list the names of all the machines that Ansible will manage. These names can be anything because Ansible uses them as references internally. Once the names are added, we specify the actual IP addresses using the Ansible underscore host keyword. In our setup, do we already have prod group with prod one, prod two, and prod three, all virtual machines running in Proxmox. But in real scenarios, we often need multiple groups to separate environments or purposes. Let's see how we can define another group alongside our existing prod group. We'll create a new group called dev, defined in the same way as prod. I'll add a host called dev1 under this group. Since we have limited resources, we'll take prod3 and use it as dev1. I'll also add one of my physical Linux machines which I use for development, and name it Linux underscore PC. Now we have two main groups, prod and dev. In a real world scenario, each environment could have multiple servers. For example, the prod group could contain prod one, prod two, and prod three, while the dev group could contain dev one, dev two, and dev three. These servers might be spread across different cloud providers for high availability. For instance, prod one and dev one could be on AWS, prod two and dev two on Azure, and prod three and dev three on Google Cloud Platform or GCP. Sometimes you may want to target only production servers, and other times only servers from a specific provider. This is why each host can belong to more than one group, one for the environment, like prod or dev, and another for the provider, like AWS, Azure, or GCP. Similarly, our hosts can also belong to different types, like Proxmox virtual machines or local physical devices. This helps us run different tasks depending on the type of machine. So, how do we define the same host under multiple groups in Ansible? 
To do this, we'll create a group called Local, which will contain only my physical bare metal machines. We are not including Proxmox VMs here because we will create a separate group for them later. The reason for this local group is to demonstrate how a host can belong to multiple groups. For example, our Linux underscore PC host is already part of the dev group, and now we'll also include it in the local group. To do this, we just reference its name again and leave the value blank. It's important that the name matches exactly, so Ansible recognizes it as the same host. This setup allows us to run tasks on all development machines, or specifically on local machines when needed. I'll also add my Linux laptop to the local group, even though it's not part of production or development, so I can include it for tasks like updates or managing network shares. Now, there's another scenario we need to handle. In our inventory, a few variables are defined under the prod group. But these same variables could also apply to other groups like dev or local. Repeating them in each group would be inefficient and harder to maintain. So, what if we could create a parent group and apply the variables to all included groups at once? We can do exactly that using a meta group. A meta group is a parent group that can contain other groups or individual hosts. To understand this better, let's take a quick look at the Ansible documentation. If we scroll down, there's a section on meta groups. Here we see how to define a meta group. First, you give the meta group a name. Then, instead of using hosts, you use the keyword children. Below children, you list all the groups that belong to this meta group. If we scroll down a bit, we can see some examples. Here, there are three regular groups and two meta groups. In the meta groups, instead of using hosts, they use the keyword children, and all the child groups are listed under it. So let's go back to our inventory file and apply this. We'll create a parent group called system. Under that, we will use the keyword children and add all three groups prod, dev, and local. Now let's move the variables that were defined under the prod group into the new system meta group. This way, those variables will automatically apply to prod, dev, and local without having to repeat them. There's one more thing we should look at. Apart from these groups, we also have a few Proxmox virtual machines that we might want to manage together. So just like we created the local group earlier, we'll create another group for Proxmox VMs. In this case, we want to include both a group and a single host inside the same meta group. So inside PVE underscore VMS, we'll first add the keyword children, and under that we'll list the prod group. Then just below it, we'll add another section called hosts, and there we'll mention the dev one host. This creates a combination where one part of the group contains another group, and the other part contains an individual host. Ansible will now understand that PVE underscore VMS includes everything from the prod group along with a single dev one machine. It's a very useful way to combine multiple sets of machines under one group when you want to run the same tasks on all of them. To keep things neatly organized, we'll place the PVE underscore VMS group right after the local group. This way, both related sections stay together and it will be much easier to manage as the inventory file grows. Now, any variables we define under the system meta group will automatically apply to all three groups. But there's one more thing we need to take care of. In my setup, the Linux PC and the Linux laptop have different become passwords. Right now, we have mentioned a become password at the system group level. So to override this, we can specify the become password directly inside those two hosts. For all other hosts, Ansible will continue to use the become password from the system group. Now, if we execute this playbook, it will run the prepare play. Since we have mentioned all hosts in our playbook, it will execute for every machine listed in the inventory. This task includes updating the cache and then performing a distribution upgrade. To run it, we will execute the configure.sh file, which will trigger the playbook along with our updated inventory file. In the terminal, run configure.sh. Once the Ansible container starts, it will begin executing the prepare system play. During the gathering facts task, Ansible is able to connect successfully with all five host machines. After that, it moves on to the update task. This might take a little while since it's the first update for all the machines. Once that finishes, Ansible starts the distribution upgrade task, which can also take some time. When all the tasks are complete, we can see a summary in the play recap section. For each host, there are two changes, one for updating the cache and another for performing the distribution upgrade. Once everything is done, the container will stop automatically. 
Now that everything is working as expected, let's move a step further. So far, our playbook has been running tasks across all hosts, but now let's see how we can target a specific group. So let's open the playbook and create a new play. This play will install the QEMU guest agent on our Proxmox virtual machines. We'll set the host to PVE underscore VMS, and since we're installing a package, we'll enable become for pseudo privileges. Next, we'll add a role section and create a new role called install QEMU guest agent. Just like we did earlier for the prepare role, we'll define this one properly. Inside this folder, create a task directory and within that a main.yml file. Now inside this file, let's define a task to install the package. For that, we'll use Ansible's built-in APT module. We've already seen this module in a previous video while running system updates, so the concept should feel familiar. The name parameter is used to specify the package name, and the state parameter defines whether the package should be installed, updated, or removed. If we don't specify it, the default value is present, which means Ansible will install the package if it isn't already there. So let's create a task called install QEMU guest agent. Use the ansible.builtin.apt module, and below it, mention the name parameter. Instead of writing the package name directly, we'll define it as a list. This makes it easier to add more packages later if needed. Then we'll set the state to present. Now let's run the playbook and check if Ansible only targets our Proxmox virtual machines for installing QMU guest agent. So let's head back to the terminal and run the script again. The prepare system play starts first. It won't take long since it already ran once before and most of the setup is already in place. Once that finishes, Ansible automatically moves on to the next play. This time, it's only targeting the Proxmox machines and you can see that clearly in the gathering facts section. Now it's installing the package on all three machines and everything looks good. Once it completes, the recap confirms one change on each host, which means our playbook executed successfully without any issues. With this setup done, we've now built a flexible structure for our inventory. Using the same approach, we can create inventory files for any kind of setup, whether it's physical servers, virtual machines, or even cloud environments. If you face any issues, feel free to join my Discord server. You'll also find all the code and examples used in this video on my GitHub repository. Let me know what you think about this video in the comments section. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this, check out the next video where we automate another interesting task with Ansible. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.